So the news of the European Super League is dominating the headlines at the moment, but what would that actually mean for the Championship and the rest of the EFL? Let's take a look. Guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. Lots of talking points and things to discuss in today's video. Now, I mean, yeah, this has been a subject which has been heavily covered by, you know, footballing media all over the place. But what the avenue I thought we'd sort of go down today's video is the EFL route and what implications could actually be on the horizon due to this happening. So I welcome your guys' feedback on this one in the comments down below. As always, if you do going to enjoy, make sure to leave a like. So what I thought we'd look into, first of all, was the EFL statement that they released the other day. Basically, they said that the EFL stands with the Premier League, the FA, the PFA, etc., uh, with condemning the European Super League in its current format. Now, the statement goes on to say, a strong pyramid based on promotion, relegation, and ultimately European qualification is fundamental to our game's continued success. The EFL opposes any reform that doesn't support competition integrity or offers clubs the prospect of one day competing at the highest end of the game. And I think that that last point especially is really important when it comes to the EFL. You guys know me on the channel, I'm all always sort of like championing this level of football you know I absolutely love it and I think that we've got to a stage generally in football whereby the elite levels not just the Premier League but around the world where the sports become so saturized and it's this product which is based on profit at the highest ends and the football is actually an afterthought to some of these clubs at least down in some of the lower leagues and in the championship it's still about the football, if that makes sense. It's actually something that we've spoken about quite a few times on the channel over the years, you know, as teams go up and things like that, but the further up you go up the football and ladder, the further the fans actually become disconnected from those people running the clubs. And I think that it's never been more clear than what's come out over these last few days now. As well as the EFL releasing a statement, my side, North End, and a fair few other championship clubs have also said things. So this is what North End said. We have noted with disappointment the suggestion that a European Super League be formed as means of concentrating yet more wealth into the hands of the few. The second paragraph here was another point that I really wanted to pick up on. If one takes the status of these so-called big six over a longer time frame than just the formation of the Premier League, it would take a wise person to guess at who these so-called top six are. Over a sustained historic period, the suggestion that these clubs have been at the forefront of domestic trophy winning or domination does not stand the test of scrutiny. Now, of course, what a lot of people will have seen would have been uh, Gary Neville's, you know, really passionate rant about this you know he speaks about the you know three most historic clubs in English football going for this the likes of the Manchester United the Arsenal's and the Liverpool's but well, obviously at times we've seen new money coming into the game and different teams dominating let's for example take Tottenham as an example and look into the championship clubs who've won either the same or more amount of league titles than they have so Tottenham have won two league titles this is obviously the Premier League Division 1 what we're talking about at the moment so Tottenham in their history have won it twice my side North End has also won it twice Derby County have won it twice and they've won it more recently than Spurs. We then get into the sides who have won it more than Tottenham. Huddersfield have won it three times. Blackburn have won it three times. Sheffield Wednesday have won League four times. And that's without even getting into European trophies. But I think you get the point that I'm getting at. And of course, one of the extreme looks for what could potentially happen out of all this is the top six just leaving English football. So we'll take a bit of a look into what that could actually mean for the Championship and the rest of the EFL. So I'll put them all into a bit of a FIFA simulation to see how that would actually unpan over the next few years but in terms of the actual financial implications of the top six clubs just you know getting up and leaving that would have huge detrimental effects right down through the EFL and down as far as grassroots football because although the temptation is there to just say to those six clubs and the owners of them you know okay you can just go off now and do your own thing we'll carry on doing this the funding wouldn't be the same and there is then the danger of everything just collapsing in on itself and what this pandemic has probably highlighted more than anything is the unsustainability of some of these football clubs at the moment and the way they're operating. I'd really love to get your guys' thoughts on this down below, but uh, yeah, let's switch over to FIFA. So if the worst does come to worst, this is what the Premier League could potentially look like if the top six were just to leave English football. So what I've gone ahead and done is promoted currently the top six sides in the Championship up to the Premier League. I've done that for the whole of the EFL, so top six of League One go up to the Championship, top six of League Two go up to League One, and so on and so forth. So this is how the Premier League table would look with no top six. We're going to simulate a couple seasons into the future see how the leagues would be shaping up and stuff like that but uh, I mean yeah it would make an interesting league table to say the least I mean calling a winner from these lot 
it would be pretty tough, you know, you've obviously still got, you know, your Leicesters, your Everton's that you'd expect to be in and around the top of the table. Leeds, obviously, would really be fancying their chance of being up there. West Ham's as well, but uh, it would make things very interesting. Let's take a look at the championship table at the start of the season. All the League One clubs obviously being promoted up to this league. It would make things... Very interesting. I'm interested to see one season into the future where everyone's finishing. So let's go ahead and simulate one year into the future and see whereabouts everyone is. So we have now simulated one year into the future. Let's first of all take a look at how the Premier League shaping up and how the championship clubs that got promoted to the Premier League have fared in their first year up. I'm expecting probably three of the promoted championship clubs to have been relegated, but hey, that at least means three of them will have survived. So boom, let's take a look at the Premier League standing. So it's Leicester who have won the league. Quite a tight title race actually between Leicester and Everton in the end. Leicester winning it with 83 points compared to Everton's 82. Making up the rest of the Champions League, we've got West Ham and Leeds. Leeds having a great season there and Wolves finishing in fifth. Okay, let's go down the one by one, see where the first Championship club comes in. So Fulham and West Brom doing decent for themselves, comfortably mid-table. Palace 12th. Okay, so it's Brentford as the best performing of the promoted championship clubs, finishing 13th in the Premier League with 48 points. I'm interested to see overall how actually congested this table is because, I mean, we don't have anyone running away with the league with, like, 100 points or something stupid like that. So, okay, it's all right so far. 14th, we have Watford coming in right behind Brentford on 39 points. So there's quite the drop-off in points, actually, after Brentford. We've then got Brighton. Swansea, 16, so also survived. Oh, I'm very interested to see who's going down here. So Sheffield United just avoiding relegation in 17th. And it's Norwich, Bournemouth and Barnsley who go down. Barnsley maybe not just ready for the Premier League just yet, finishing on just the 15 points. Sure they do a lot better than that in real life. I'd love to see Barnsley up in the Premier League. But uh, interesting that Norwich have gone down. Still yo-yoing between the leagues, even with the top six um, out of there at the moment. I thought Norwich would have done a little bit better really. But just going down by two points. Interesting. Let's take a look at the championship standings. And wow, it's Millwall winning the league with 89. I mean, this is a or off the bat, a really topsy-turvy championship table. We've got Millwall winning the league, Derby second, the rest of the playoffs, Blackburn, Forest, Birmingham, Bristol City. Preston finishing eighth, Cardiff seventh there. I'm interested to see how the rest of the sort of promoted League One teams are done. Wednesday doing a lot better. Let's take a look at the... Okay, so Lincoln, 18th. Wickham, avoiding relegation in 19th. Peterborough, surviving. Peterborough would be a nice addition to the Championship, I feel like. They've been uh, knocking on the door for a while now in League One, but they've really produced some you know, high-quality attacking players, especially, so they'd be an interesting one. Sunderland do survive. And then going down, it's Blackpool, Hull, and Oxford United. Very interesting. Take a brief look at League One as well. So it's Doncaster and Portsmouth going up, with the plus being made up of Ipswich, Fleetwood, Shrewsbury, and Burton. Wigan and Bolton just missing out on the top six and then here's the rest of the table okay interesting stuff let's go another year into the future and see how much has changed then so this is how the premier league table would look two years into the future if there was no big six let's take a look at who's winning it okay so it's the same top two but flipped around this time it's everton who pip leicester to the title with west ham and aston villa making up the rest of the top four brentford having a really good season making themselves into eighth in the premier league so they've really established themselves now as a premier league club let's go a bit, bit further down okay so watford still doing fairly well Swansea still surviving and then going down, it's all the newly promoted clubs. It's Millwall, Birmingham and Derby. Derby bottom of the table, I know, is 16 points. At least Birmingham have matched them in that regard, but let's swiftly move on. Let's take a look into the championship. Oh my god, it's Preston who have been promoted at last into the Premier League, winning the championship in some fashion, by the way, finishing on 101 points. My God, we're going up to the big time with Nottingham Forest and they're making up the playoffs. It's Cardiff, Bristol City, Norwich and Bournemouth. Let's take a look at the rest of the championship. Let's take a look at who's going down. So Shrewsbury do survive. It's Wickham, Doncaster and Lincoln this time getting relegated from the championship. Let's take a look into League One. It's Oxford going back up alongside Hull with Ipswich, Plymouth, Charlton and Blackpool making up the playoffs. Right, let's simulate one more season to see the final outcome of this. Right, so three seasons now into the future. Let's take a look at what the Premier League would look like without the top six. So it's a new winner once again. It's Wolves winning the title this time with 84 points. See, this is what I like about the Premier League maybe without the top six. We get a 
new winner every single season. That competitive edge is really back about the Premier League and the unpredictability. Leeds again making it into the top four. Fulham fifth, having a really good time. Burnley sixth. Watford seventh place. That's the best finish we've seen so far from a championship club. Uh, Brentford in 11th, still doing fairly well. Sheffield United, Southampton. Okay, I'm getting worried. I'm, I'm assuming that Preston will have been relegated here. Uh, Swansea 16th, West Brom. Norwich relegated again. Forest and Preston with seven points all season. Oh my god. In this alternative reality that we've created for this video, I'm absolutely fuming. Could you imagine? Oh my god, I'd lose my head. One win all season, Preston pick up in the Premier League. Picking up a measly seven points. Oh my god, I... Yeah, I'm not sure if I'd ever be able to recover from that season. We conceded 91 goals and scored us 28. Jesus, that's not not the best. Uh, let's take a look at the championship. So it's Cardiff winning it, going up with Bournemouth. Stoke, Bristol City, Reading and Millwall making up the playoffs. Let's take a look at who is going down in the championship this season. So it's Shrewsbury, Sunderland and Ipswich who have made it back up to the championship. And then finally, let's take a look at League One. It's Lincoln and Wickham going up with Crew, Plymouth. Blackpool and Bristol Rovers making up the rest of the top six. Interesting experiment nonetheless. I thought this would be a little bit of fun to look into, maybe an alternative reality without the top six in the future in English football. That will though wrap it up for today's video, guys. Like I mentioned before, I'd really welcome your guys' comments on this down below. Really interested to see what you guys have to say on this subject. This was just a little bit of a fun spin to put on it towards the end of, you know, what would the Premier League look like without the top six and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe and stick around for some regular championship content still loads to the side for the remainder of this season of course check out the patreon links that is down below but apart from that thanks for tuning in guys and i'll see you all in the next one